In today's video, what I'm going to do is go through the installation of Splunk on your virtual box machine. Now, in this video, the point that we're going to start from is assuming that you've got your virtual machine infrastructure. If you haven't got that done already, I've got a link in the description below. So I'm going to use an Ubuntu based server and Ubuntu by default, the server will come as a CLI, so command line interface. You can either carry on with that, but I'm going to be using the GUI version. And again, I've got another video if you want to replicate the same infrastructure. So check out the two videos below and you'll get up to speed with where we are. If you've got your server installed and ready, then you can continue on from here. So with the servers installed and ready, we'll click start and we'll start those Ubuntu server GUI machines. Okay, and if you've not seen this uh, desktop before, I installed that using something called Slim and Task Cell. If you watch the videos I've got in the description below, you'll be able to do this as well. Otherwise, as long as you've got a GUI interface, assuming that's what you're after, then you're able to continue from here. So just log into the server as normal. And what we want to do is open a web browser. And then you can just put up Firefox. And obviously the adapter that you set needs to have internet access in order to do this. We're going to have to reach out and download the Splunk file so easiest thing to do is probably just search for splunk free and i'll show you which uh, link to go on to there we go it's free trials and downloads and if you haven't got an account already you need to register i'll do that in this case what we want is the splunk enterprise edition and as it says there you can index up to 500 megabytes a day for 60 days and then you can renew that as well so let's click on that one now this just sets up the Splunk installation on the server to get it actually working like you would do in a normal environment. There are other parts that you'll need to do, like use a universal forwarder, etc. I'll cover that in future videos, so stay tuned and subscribe if, if you want to, and then you'll be kept up to date when I get the next one ready and out on YouTube. So here's the registration page that you'll go to. So if you want to do that and then click on uh, create your account when you're done. So I'll get that set up now. Once you've entered your details, all right, once you've entered your details, this button will show up with the purple pinky color. Click on create your account and go to the next stage where we should be presented with the option to download. Okay, so now when you're here, you get to choose your installation package. Now, just to make you aware, if you don't know much about servers, Linux tends to be the most fault tolerant. So that's the one that we're going to go with. When you click Linux, there are three options here. Now, I've got Ubuntu on the server that I've, I've set up. So probably the most easiest is the Debian based file. However, we're going to go for the tar gzip or tgz because that's just going to be for wider Linux servers. So just in case anyone's not on Ubuntu and they're on something else, then this will just capture the wider audience that might be watching this video. And then you've also got RPM. So RPM and Debian, I'll let you use if, if that's more relevant to your Linux distro. But I'm going to go with TGZ for this tutorial. So click download now. And we'll give that a few minutes, depending on the speed of your internet, to get that downloaded. Estimates just under a couple of minutes. Right, so that's finished downloaded. And what we should do is verify the MD5 as well. So we'll download that file. So here's the MD5 file, as you can see by the extension MD5. Double click that and you'll just see the actual MD5 hash there, starting with the BAA ending with the 88 what we want to do is just match that and make sure that the files maintained its integrity so we'll just get a terminal screen up can, the shortcut for that is Control alt t if we just head over to find out where the the file has downloaded to so that'll be in the downloads folder so we want to put md small case so md5 and then we'll put the file path so that's downloads remember this is all case sensitive and i think actually the easiest way if i do this is we'll just cd into it so we can copy it 
and here's our Splunk file that we want to check the MD5 hash of. So let's copy that, save us typing it out by character. Let's press the up arrow. We'll just change that to MD5 sum, put forward slash, and then we'll paste that value in. There we go, and now press enter. Didn't put a five in there. So MD5 sum, press enter, and we should get a value now. So here's the value here, so BAA, and I'm pretty happy that that matches the two. So the two hashes do, do match in this case. So that's fine. We can come out of that. That check is done. So now what we want to do is what you would do in, in Windows is you'd get a zip file and you'd un, unzip it. So that's essentially the, the same principle we want to do here. So let's go to terminal again. So control alt T and we want to change the current directory to the downloads. We're doing ls. So we can see our MD5 hash file and the actual Splunk file here. So we want to untar this and we'll put it in the opt directory. So how you do that, you do sudo tar xvzf and then just paste that file in again. So if you're typing all that out and then we're going to put that dash capital C over in the opt file. Press enter, enter your password and give that a moment to do its thing. Lovely, so that is now done. Okay, so I've got a low volume message. So what I can do after is get that updated and increased. So that's fine for now. So now what we want to do is go over to the binary. So we'll change directories. So it's cd opt blank bin, press enter. So it's found the file. And now we can start the actual service. So sudo blank dot. Now these are the Splunk general terms. Now you need to scroll down and Make sure you're happy with them. Essentially, once you get to the bottom, you get the option to agree with this license, which will select yes. And you'd need to select yes again. Now we need to set up an admin username and a password. So I'm going to set mine as blank admin and we'll create a password and we'll confirm it. That's done. Now it's going to configure all the ports and everything that it needs. It's checking the web server address. Once it's available, we'll get another update. Lovely. Now, as you can see here, that is now done. And it says the Splunk web interface is at this address here. So it's not a secure site. In our lab instance, that's fine. And it says Ubuntu server, and it's on port 8000. So what you can do is just click that, and it should just load up your web browser and go straight over to that address. For some reason, it's not quite done that. Never mind. The other thing that we need to do is on Windows servers, this will automatically start on boot, but on Linux systems, it doesn't. So we can change that. All we need to do is enter this command. So sudo dot forward slash Splunk, and then come to here. Um, I just press the up arrow, so it brings up the last command. Then you just enter enable boot dash, and then keep the start in there and press enter. And now it just says it's now installed script is configured to run at boot. So every time you launch the server now, it'll run automatically. You don't need to go in and then do the sudo dot forward slash Splunk start. It will now do it automatically. You can revert that as well. And if you change your mind, that's fine as well. So all we need to do is head over. We just copy this over to our web browser, paste it in here, and we should be presented with the Splunk interface, which we are. So if you enter your username you created, so ours was Splunk admin, and we'll enter our password and press enter. Normally wouldn't save those credentials, but it's a lab environment, so I'm happy to do that. And as you can see, that's now all, all running as it, as it should. Right, now that is your server installed with Splunk on there. Obviously, to have this ready in a proper environment and to, to be able to search, get logs, etc., we've still got work to do, but that is Splunk installed on a Linux Ubuntu server. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it useful. Oh, 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 oh,